In this video what I'd like to do is walk through an example of hedging with futures contracts and be a relatively specific example. So what we're going to look at here is assume you're a delivery company whose expenses are tied to fuel prices. You're making deliveries so as fuel prices go up your expenses are going to rise. You anticipate that you use 90,000 gallons of gasoline per month it's currently July 1st and you want to hedge your next three months of fuel costs and you're going to use the RBOB gasoline futures contract in order to do that. So let's get a little bit of information on the RBOB gasoline futures contract. First of all each contract is for 42,000 gallons. So one contract 42,000 gallons, two contracts 84,000 gallons and so on contracts expire at the end of the prior month so for example if we were to buy an August contract that would expire at the end of July so if we bought an August contract we're taking delivery at the end of July if we sell an August contract we're delivering at the end of July the initial margin is eleven thousand four hundred seventy five dollars and maintenance margin is 8500 so for each contract we buy or short we have to put up that initial margin of 11475 and if we lose money on our contract so that the margin balance falls below 8500 then we have to put in additional cash flows to bring it back up to that initial margin of 11475 now in our example that we go through we're not going to go through the mark to market on a daily basis so we're not going to worry about that margin call but that is something that you'd have to deal with in a real world scenario so the first question that we have is we want to hedge our gasoline exposure should we buy a contract go long or should we sell a contract go short in order to initiate our futures position the way to think of this is our exposure is to gas prices. We're a delivery company, so as gas prices go up, what that's going to do is cause our expenses to go up. And as our expenses go up, our profit is going to go down. So if we want to hedge that risk exposure and protect our profits, we need a situation where our futures position is going to increase in value when gas prices go up. So if we go long the contract, buy gasoline futures, then we will make a profit on those futures when gas goes up and that's going to offset our natural risk exposure. So our hedge position here is to go long or to buy the contracts. Next thing we have to think about is how many contracts should we use? Well, we use 90,000 gallons of gas every month. Remember, each contract was for 42,000 gallons. So we need two contracts to get a hedge and that's going to hedge 84,000 gallons of gas. Notice we don't have a perfect hedge. We still have 6,000 gallons on hedged. That's something we're going to have to deal with. If we buy three contracts, that's going to push us well over what we need to hedge. We're going to be at 126,000 gallons. So the closest we can come is two contracts. So how many contracts should we use? Two. Next question, what is our initial cash flow? Remember, in order to initiate these positions, we need to put up that initial margin. The initial margin we said was $11,475. Now we need two contracts and we have three months that we're trying to hedge. So we have two times 11,475. It's going to give us 22,950 for each month. We have three months that we're going to be hedging. 
So initially we're going to have to put $68,850 into our margin account in order to establish these positions. That gives us two contracts for each month for August, September, and October. That's going to be our next three months. Now our next question, assume the price of gasoline is currently $3.50 a gallon and the August futures is 2.8974. And these were actual prices at the time that I made this example, but they fluctuate daily, so they're probably not what's in place right now as you're viewing this. September futures is $2.8798 per gallon, and October futures were $2.7658. Why the discrepancy? First thing I want to notice is that in this situation our futures contracts were in backwardization. Contango is when futures prices are higher than the current spot price. Backwardization is when futures prices are lower than the current spot price. We can see that as we go out few further the futures drop so that we're in a situation of backwardization in the gasoline futures market. The other difference is why the big difference in the price at the pump, 350, versus the RBOB futures contract. And the reason for that is partly distribution. Futures contracts have to be delivered to a certain spot, not to each gasoline or each gas station. So the gas station is going to have to get that gas delivered to them that's going to be a distribution cost sometimes you might notice if you're in a rural area gas prices might be a little bit higher there aren't many gas stations part of that could be competition part of it could be the distribution costs get a little bit higher we also have profits the gas station has to make a little bit of a profit most gas stations actually don't make too much profit on their gasoline, but a couple cents a gallon profit on their gasoline, that's going to tack it up. But one of the big factors is also taxes. And that's why you see a big difference between various states on fuel prices. For instance, I live in Missouri, kind of on the border of Missouri and Kansas, and typically gas prices in Kansas are 15 to 20 cents a gallon higher than they are in Missouri. So when we get to price at the pump, we see things like distribution costs, profits, and different state taxes on gasoline that end up resulting in different prices at the pump from the RBOB futures. However, what you're typically going to see is if you watch the gasoline futures contract as the RBOB drops, prices at the pump, will also drop. Now there's probably going to be a little bit of a delay on that. Prices at the pump typically drop two to seven days after the contract goes down. On the flip side, when the RBOB futures go up, prices at the pump tend to rise relatively quickly, typically one to three days. You'll notice those prices have already gone up. So a little bit of an explanation on the difference between the futures contract and prices at the pump. Now let's look at average gas prices for the next three months are $3.25, $3.280. And How much does your firm save compared to the current price? Typo there when I was writing the question, so we want to make it compared to the current price. Now we're not looking at the futures here, we're just looking at what actually happened. This was our risk exposure that we were trying to hedge against is gasoline prices changing going forward. Gasoline prices are currently $3.50 a gallon. And so what we're seeing here is that they're going to be dropping over the next few months, which should save us money on our expenses. Fuel savings each month. Remember, we used 90,000 gallons a month. Difference between the current price and the price, average price in July is $0.25 cents a gallon times 90,000 means we save 22,500 in fuel costs in July. In August, prices dropped to $3 a gallon on average, 
So we save 50 cents a gallon, 90,000 gallons. We save 45,000 in fuel costs. And in September, prices dropped all the way down to 280 a gallon. Saved 70 cents a gallon on 90,000 gallons. Total savings of 63,000. Over the three months, we saved 22,500, 45,000, 63,000. Net savings, 130,500. So if we would not have hedged our position, we would have actually ended up with higher than expected profits due to the decline in fuel costs. However, we hedged our position. So now we have to look at what we lost on our fuel on our futures contracts. Let's assume that the futures contracts closed at the following prices: 268.13 in August, 241.40 in September and 209.99 in October. Remember the August contract gets settled at the end of July, September at the end of August, and October gets settled at the end of September. So how much did we lose on our futures contracts? Well, the August futures contract we initially paid 289.74 for. It ended up closing at 268.13, so we lost the difference between those values times 84,000, net loss of $18,152.40 on our August futures. Our September futures, again, we initially paid $287.98. It closed at $241.40, so we took a loss again on that position, $39,127.20. And our October futures, we initially paid $276.58. They closed out at 209.99, 84,000 gallons. We lost 55,935, which means we took a total loss on our futures of $113,215.20. That's just adding up the three individual losses. So in this example, we ended up really getting hit on our hedge. We lost $113,215 on our hedging activity brings us to the final question. Was it a good hedge? The answer is, despite the appearances, yes, this was a great hedge. Because remember what we were trying to do with our hedge. We were trying to reduce our natural risk exposure. If gas prices went up, our hedge would have went up. So this would have hurt our profitability. We would have offset that by making money on our futures position. Instead, what happened was gas prices went down. We lost money on our hedge. That's okay. Our business is delivery business. It's not gasoline prediction business. We, if we do a good job at delivering, build in a reasonable profit margin, make our customers happy, now we've just eliminated a risk exposure that we can't control. A gasoline or a delivery company, whether it's a big company like UPS or a small local delivery company, can't control the cost of gas, so that's a risk that they want to hedge away. Instead, what they want to control is make sure they take on the risk of timely delivery, setting good prices, making sure their customers are satisfied. If they do a good job on those things and they hedge their gas, that's what they're trying to accomplish. In this case, remember, we're trying to offset our risk exposure. Well, the natural risk exposure resulted in 130500 in additional gain from fuel savings, but we offset most of that 113,215.20 with a loss. Our net impact of gas prices was less than $20,000. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to eliminate the impact of gas prices. So was it a good hedge? Yes. Gas price fluctuations had little impact on our profits. And that's what we're trying to do with our hedging is to reduce that risk exposure. 
In this case, the hedge ended up taking away some of our potential profits. We had an opportunity cost, but if gas prices would have went up, that would have helped us protect those profits. Again, the hedge is not designed to be an income producing activity. It's designed to be risk reduction, and that's what we accomplished here.